Greetings, good day, Goeiemorgen. Doe mij lang. Morweni, I am Ashton Afrikaner Thyssen and I am a lecturer in the in the Faculty of Theology in the Department of Systematic Theology and Ecclesiology. I am joined today with my lovely colleague, the student. Please introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kayla Reiters, born and bred in Stellenbosch. I'm a third year theology student, but I'm also the chairperson of the student committee. Yeah. Congratulations on your election as chair, Thank you. Kayla. I am pleased to have you present here today. And friends, colleagues, the intention of our time together is that we will respond to some of your questions that you might be having regarding studying theology. As has been mentioned, I, we represent the Faculty of Theology and we are here to furnish, furnish you with information that you might need. So perhaps you could already go into what theology entails. Kayla, why did you choose theology? Well, that's, there's no short answer to that. If you can, please make you know? it brief. <laughs> okay, okay, so I did a um, gap year program of the school, mm -hmm. didn't come straight to, into studies, did a gap year program, did like work with youth mm. and you know, and working with the youth um, in developing with them, growing with them. Yes. Um, you always, you feel the need to help. That was my heart, you mm. know, in counseling and all those type of things. But there came a point where I realized you can only help the person so far mm. when you don't have the qualifications. Mm. And then I realized that's my next step. Off the gap year, off the school, that was my thing, theology. I needed the qualification and something to back me mm. in what I want to do, what my calling is, yeah. what my heart is, I need to do. Thank you for sharing. I'm, I'm, I'm mindful now, you, you mentioned that you're working with youth. Yes. So we have a few degree programs at the Faculty of Theology. So which degree program are you doing, Kayla? At the moment, I'm doing PTH General. Mm -hmm. um, it is a brother of PTH Youth Work. Mm -hmm. So the two of the, um, the streams are basically similar. Mm -hmm. Youth work, they have all the modules set up for you to mm. be a youth worker. Gen the general course is basically the same, but it gives you more scope to choose elec elective modules that's mm. maybe outside of our faculty. Yes. Yes. Thank you for sharing. So that then provides us with the opportunity to think about the three degree programs that the faculty has on offer. So the one Kayla was referring to is the BTH General, which as she has mentioned, it has a much more broader focus on theology in conversation with um, modules and courses at the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. There's also the BTH Youth Work, which focuses more intensely on what is, might be needed for um, theologians to do work, to do practice, amongst youth and with alongside youth. And then there is the BDiv program, which has a particular focus on preparing ministers, pastors um, for ministry in particular denominations. At present, in the Faculty of Theology, we have agreements with a few churches that help um, frame how we prepare ministers for, how we prepare persons for ministry and that is with the Dutch Reformed Church of the Nederlandse Gereformeerde Kerk, the United Reformed Church in Southern Africa, the Anglican Church in Southern Africa, the Lutheran Church, the Default Kerk, and also the Presbyterian Church. So these are the three programs that we have on offer at the Faculty of Theology. So, I perhaps should reflect a bit on, on the BDiv program that has a particular focus because one thing that shocks students often is the expectation that they are to do Greek and Hebrew. And so in the BDiv program, because of the agreements we have with some churches, um, there's expectation that we do have students complete modules in Greek and Hebrew. And as you might be aware, 
um, the Old Testament of the Christian Bible was written in Hebrew and for that reason we require students to complete a module in a module on first and second level second year level um, in in Hebrew and then the New Testament which was written in Greek we require that you complete that as well but that is only of bearing on students who pursue the BDiv program students who do the BTH general can choose if they would like to do Greek and Hebrew and then students in the BTH will often not do the um, ancient languages but there are options for you to choose and your gut instinct is oftentimes the best one. So perhaps we could think about what the role right now, I would love to hear from you, Kayla, what is the role of the Theological Student Committee in the faculty? Well, so in the faculty, in each faculty, you have your students, hmm. which we refer to your student body. Then you have your lecturers, professors that's presenting to you day, day by day. And then you have your tutors, every, all the role players. So basically, your, the committee, they are there as the link between the two. Mm. They, if there is problems, first your student, you have your class rep representatives as well. Usually problems go to them. If they can't sort it out, we are there on standby to help. Yeah. But also, as I see our first question, Please. our qu first question for the night is, what is your top tip for a student in terms of balancing academics, sport, for example? And I think this is one of my favorite type of questions because in my pre previous term, I did student wellness. Mm. And the wellness of the human being is very close and near to my heart. So um, the holistic person, you know, mind, body, soul, mm. all that combined. Yeah. Um, in terms of academics, as a student at a university, this great. You always want to do all the best. You yeah. want to, you know, especially when you come from your small town, you don't want to, hmm. you don't want to, like, in Afrikaans, we say, you don't want to, disappoint. you don't want to disappoint, you know, you don't want to disappoint your family yeah. that send you here to study, Yeah. you know, and then, you study, 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 and that most of the times le leads to burnout, or I don't want to say depression, but like mentally, sometimes anxiety gets yeah. to you. So with that being said, exercising, going for walks. Absolutely. You know, I always tell my friends, like you, we, we tend to overwhelm ourselves, we want to work, but rest is just as productive mm as doing work. Rest is very productive. And even if it's, especially in winter, it's not so easy, but to drink water, you know? Mm. You know, as a, like, I run. So that's the one thing that keeps me sane, that helps me a lot, running. And you just feel the difference when you, like, take your water. That's one of the top things. And time management. Mm. Time management. You know, I think that's, something at some point that we all struggle with. Time management, you know, getting up that extra five minutes, you know, planning like, what am I gonna do today? Yeah. What is my goal for today? Even if it's just doing the reading and not even starting with your assignment, but planning, you know? Because especially when you're a sport person, like mm. the question, yeah. if you're a sport person, you know your workouts or your Training is tonight at five. Mm. You need to make sure before your training, you at least have some work done because the possibility is that you might be tired after the training. So yeah. that kind of balances and those type of planning you have to put in place if you want to perform and excel in both areas of your life. Yeah, I, 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 I quite agree. I quite agree, Kayla, that at the Faculty of Theology, we are trying to advance holistic growth. We are trying yes 
to advance this notion of life in abundance. And for that reason, we take it seriously that students and, and staff, that we as a community of knowledge partners come together to think about how we inhabit the world. And so perhaps this is a good segue with regards to how students are able to manage their time, to think through how they might approach their academic program, to, to ask the question of, so what are the um, support network, what is the support network provided for students? And um, I, I will ask you particularly in the next few seconds about the faculty, but, but the university has made very clear that we want to focus on how students, um, we want to focus on students, student excellence, we want students to have um, an enriching experience at Stellenbosch University. And so for that reason, we have the Center for Student uh, Counseling and Development, which provides services, counseling services for students um, um, free of charge for those who are registered uh, to pro help them manage the time better, to help them um, receive psychoanalytic support. And perhaps this is a moment to ask you, Kayla, what support does the Faculty of Theology provide, um, the Theological Student Committee or the TSC provide for students who, who might be in aid of that support once they've arrived? Okay, so firstly, obviously as a committee, we try to um, manage or look at the thing from our perspective in our capacity mm. obviously to give advice to say like what is advice but also like we try to have sessions like mindful sessions yes like breathing sessions and also like um in our new term we try to do like mental monday mm. you know to send through tips and tricks like what what are, what what you should be doing and one thing that mentally i would say that really helped me we have chapel at our faculty yeah you know that's one thing lunch hour on a wednesday that i really look forward to and it's those we sing that old hymns that's good for the soul you know yeah. that you used to sing when your grandma or grandpa was still in church so that's the it's small things that that really helps us mm. And you mentioned the, the, the help that we have at the university itself. I can testify from that mm. in my first year. So they have academic assistance as well. So they make you do a little test and then they actually tell you what type of student you are. Like, how do you learn? Yeah. Do you need to make mind maps? Do you ma need to make sticky notes, highlighter? Like, what are you creative, you know? Some people need to see the bigger picture mm. before they see the smaller picture. Yeah. Some people need to start small and then they can see the bigger picture. So that's all the type of things that align. And that also, all the questions that you are asking is aligning with the questions Please being go asked. Ahead. So the next question is, is there anywhere we can find some type of example of a theology test or exam? Ooh, that is a very interesting question to ask. Um, well, well, me, <laughs> uh, given that my students were just last week. So there is not particularly an example. I can say two things at this stage. There might not be an example of what a theology test might look like, but if you did a language at school, which you have done, then that is a sure way to ensure that you will most likely be successful. So in theology, one of the things that sets us apart from the rest of the university is the fact that all of our, well, let me say, not say all, but the majority of our questions are essay type questions. And so we require that students in essay format um, respond to a statement or a question. Um, and, and here it might be helpful to think of literature questions in, in English or Afrikaans or Eskosa, um, thinking through those, how that might help you. So we tend to, so one of the things that's absolutely required of theological students is that they have a keenness to read. And if you are able to immerse yourself in texts, then you are able to respond 
to the forms of assessments that are required. Now, that said, I should note, when I speak of essays, I am talking about the semester test, I am talking about the exams, and I'm talking about the assignment. But oftentimes, in quite a few modules, there are alternative forms of assessing students, their readiness, um, and often that plays out in quizzes, in, in, the, in the weekly lectures, but we do require that students have um, not an appreciation of texts, but also a readiness to write essays. Um, any thoughts on, on essay writing and reading and write, well, the requirements of what it means to be a student, as you are? You know, you, you don't always know everything from the get-go. Mm. You don't. You learn along the way. You find the ways of having to write all both essays in two hours sometimes you think oh no that's a lot of time but sometimes you have this amount of yeah. knowledge you know and this also joins in with wellness like your mm. your mindset of things so me and my my fellow um friends at the faculty we recently started studying together mm. you know and saying like okay you'll go through question one i'll go through question yeah. two we'll combine the work see what we have left out and like talk through the work yeah. you know because one of the things if if you're able to explain to someone what we sh should be doing and then you should know what yeah. what what will come in and that's also a great study method but yeah most majority of the questions is longer type questions mm. But it's the one thing that I've learned or what my brother taught me. Like when you study, it's almost like a story that you tell him. Absolutely. You know, because theology also has to do with the history. Mm. You know, what has happened in the past and why are we here? You know, and how did we come about? How do we find ourselves in yeah. these positions? You know, so it's a story that you're telling. It's how everything came about and obviously how you write your essays is different to each module absolutely like you solve systematic theology and ecclesiology sometimes it has more to do with history mm. and then you basically have to just write the history of it but when you come to practical theology you have to apply to your knowledge what you have today and your context in South Africa because you can't just like write like what this person and that person is saying but apply and apply because that's how we that's what we need for today in youth work and in the church today I think you're right and that that perhaps is a good segue to journey into what are the modules that are taught within the faculty of theology and so the 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 one that sort of offers us roots um, in how we do theological studies is Old and New Testaments, the two models of Old Testament and New Testaments that of course draw inspiration from scripture, from the Bible, and then secondary to that is, the, well, not secondary, but linked to that is the module of systematic theology where we ask questions about doctrine, we ask questions about ethics, what do we believe and why do we believe it? And then linked to systematic theology is what I teach, ecclesiology, um, which focuses on church, uh, church history. What is the history of the Christian church? Um, why is history shaped in the way that it is? And then th link, well, particularly linked to systematic theology because of its focus on philosophy, as Kayla has said, is um, church, well, ch church law, which I primarily teach, and there we ask the fundamental question. So how do churches govern themselves? What inspires Christians to join churches and be part of them? And so we have those four, and then the, the third, the fourth, the fifth one, sorry, is practical theology that asks this fundamental question. So we now have the history. You have the Bible, but what must Christians do in practice? 
and that is practical theology. How are we as a community supposed to be in the community and serve the community? And then finally, we have missiology. And missiology focuses on the mission of the church, which is in community. My hunch, Kayla, is that you have a few questions. I have. And this will probably be the most difficult question for you to answer because this question requires for, from you to choose a favorite. And the question is, what is the best line slash quote regarding any topic that you've seen in a test or essay? How do you choose? Best line or quote in, a, in an essay? Or just probably it's just what, you, what you've learned so far or maybe recently. Yeah, that, I'm, going to, I'm going to respond to this question, but I'm going to ask you to also respond to it because I, I know you have one. I obviously have one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite generally tends to be because, because this touches at the heart of um, theology and theology that is practiced at Salem Bosch, but also within the Christian faith. And that is the quote by the theologian within the 13th century, Anselm. And he said, um, he, well, he, he said that faith is the seeking of understanding. Faith requires that we seek knowledge. It requires that we seek wisdom. And so that means that faith, our appreciation of faith, our being enveloped and invited into faith requires that we espouse critical thinking. What's yours? Well, I don't know if this one would sound much familiar to you, but it's one that I've learned recently in community development, mm. and it says, Batho Pele. Oh, wow. And it says, in translation, people first. Mm. And that's, that's the heart of theology. Absolutely. That's the heart of youth work. That's the, the heart of pastoral care, where my heart is, by the way. <laughs> Um, because it's not about me. Mm. It's not about the good news that I'm bringing, you know, but it's about the needs of the people. Absolutely. How can I be at service to the people, mm. you know? And like, I just sometimes randomly think about it. I love <laughs> and that. that's, that's like a foundation that when with every assignment, or task that you wanna like do or project in a community, mm. Bath of Bele, wow. people first. The Thank needs you. of the people. Let's see. Um, the next question is, would we ever be required to preach as an assignment? You've been third year. I think you should perhaps answer that question. The answer is they won't ask you to preach in first year. Absolutely not. But on a third level, third year level, yes. So in one of our modules, um, Practical Theology 314 this year, um, they give, gave us like the most random text that we had to work on and preach for five minutes, you know? And yet again, we spoke earlier about the modules that we choose, you know? It depends on like the PDF that Eshun's previously referred to. That is the stream of every, most majority of that people will become ministers, right? They will become ministers, pastors of a congregation. But um, PTH, general and youth work, they don't necessarily go into a congregation as a minister. But so with that being said, yes, you will. You will be required to preach, but like from a third year level, nothing to be ashamed or like afraid about. Nothing to like, it won't scare you. It's part of the experience. And at that point, it will come natural. Like it's a class that you've known for three years and it's just in front of them. It's yeah, it will be okay. Yeah. 
I, I think one of the, the imp important things that you've just touched on is how theology, as much as we are about assessments and we need to focus on preparing students to work in the world, we are focused on, on forming students on forming servants of community, and, and that you've touched on, Kayla, um, just now, how we are called, because many of us who do theology have a, a particular sense of calling that we are, we are driven to go and serve a particular community. And, and so in as much as we focus on assessments, because that is the requirement, we need to prepare you to work in the world, but we do focus on the fact that we are all on, journey, on a journey together and so as you are prepared in the years to come should you join we can assure you that by the time you reach the assessment you've already been on a journey not only with the lecturer but also with the students and that would make that first preaching assignment that much more bearable yes i think the general next question would be what can i do with my um, degree you know because in my first year, it was always awkward when I had to explain what theology is. Even yeah. like I, had, I still have um, a few m Muslim friends. Mm. So I had some difficulties explaining to them, but what's theology? Because yeah. if the person is not a Christian, the person asking, it's not a, you're not a, they're not a Christian, so how do I, ex I explain yeah. that? But like, I, and at some point, you... I Many had the assumption you can only go into ministry, but is that true? No, it's definitely not. It's definitely not true. Um, we theology opens a wide variety of options. I'd say um, those who are alumni of the faculty have journeyed into teaching, into law, into various forms of the arts, um, into community development. They have. They have entered various arena that have stimulated their interests, that have um, provided them with, a, well, I mean, let's be honest, we do study for a source of income. And they have pursued that. And so theology is not beholden to only um, church work. It goes beyond just the confines of the church. And I think you perhaps might want to reflect on, on your own um, entering of theology and the work that you see yourself doing in the future definitely definitely so as i said like you can do you can work in different spaces mm. in the church in the community in the school even have your own practice oh, absolutely. If, if you want to go that far and obviously starting an ngo mm. you know we know of quite a few um graduates that had like started their own NGO and me in particular like that's something that I would do and like have hubs where we have like counseling for our young people yeah. you know we are past the stage where we are shaming people mm. who goes for counseling yes I told somebody earlier you don't go for counseling because something is wrong mm, absolutely Counseling is a form of prevention as well. Mm. You know, it's a form of prevention, preventing for something to go wrong. You know, like I'm overwhelmed, I'm stressed. I'm not on the tip yet, Yes. but I, I don't want to be in that space. And I really feel our kids need that. Oh yeah. And it, especially for them experiencing COVID, mm. you know, like, COVID has left this mark, yeah. but it also opened a lot of doors and it, the mind shift, mind shift was great uh, yeah. in some senses. It was great. So having hubs for, and spaces for children to speak up. Yeah. But one thing that I sp I've learned in theology was working with kids, you don't just work with them, but you work with the family as well, mm. you know? Because you don't want to like pinpoint, but like that's that's how a child is formed, mm. not by the individual self, but about in their context mm. and in their family that creates the yeah. context of that child, of where they come from. 
And I think that's a, that's a, for me, that's a very good point to, to sort of to raise this question to, to parents who might be wondering, um, because truth of the matter is we, we do see um, tertiary study as a family sending a student. We recognize that. We appreciate that community sending students and so for for parents we two things are important the first is the appreciation that when they come when should your student uh, should your child study theology they will have critical questions and those critical questions will often border on whether that person might still believe in God and and what we hope to do in the Faculty of Theology is to, to nurture students, to nurture our knowledge partners as we prefer to know them, to recognize that we are all on a journey and that we want to be on that journey together. The second thing for parents that, are, that might be important is the acknowledgement that theologians tend to not get funding in the manner that we might need. So oftentimes parents have to cover this, their children's funding out of pocket, but we do invite you to make contact with the bursary office to pursue possibilities there. Kayla, are there any questions? Any more questions? We have one that asks, at what time do classes generally start and finish? Well, I haven't been a student for quite some years now, so perhaps you should answer. Um, this is, let's start with saying, university is a different ball game. Oh, absolutely. On a Monday, you might have a class at 8, and your next class might be at 2. That's just how it is, because sometimes in the case is, you might have a class in the faculty, but you might have a class like psychology, Greek and Hebrew that was mentioned that is in a different faculty that requires you to move from one faculty to the other. So the classes generally, your first class might be at eight, but your last class might be at four. So there's no like formal structure as we have in school every day from eight to two, no. It's like you might have class till Monday to Thursday and have your Friday off. But Fridays is mostly like for touch tutorials um, that you have for each module in our faculty. Um, yeah, so you have your gaps in between. Um, some days you will have fully packed. Um, certain, for certain modules, you have eight credits. Some have 16. So some um, require more time in the classroom and sometimes you have practicals as well so it all depends on the modules ha you have um, will de determine your class times yeah thank you and so our time is running out and so as we wrap this up should we not have another question I yeah. think it might be wise to just reflect a bit on the requirements that we have for pr prospective students. And so at the Faculty of Theology, we, we require that students have a 60% average for uh, subjects excluding life orientation, LO, um, and that, we, that you have a bachelor's pass. So should you have that as a starting point, that would mean that you would most likely have entry to study theology but that also means that you are expected and invited to apply um, before the closing date. Kayla, is there any final question that, that might be worth our while? Not at the moment. So I have Not one question moment. for you, and okay. I will try to respond as well to this question. What is the one thing you wish you knew before starting your theological studies? That one thing. One thing I, th I, I was hoping to know before I, wow, this is quite something. Um, Would you like more something? I can respond yes, with my response. Yes, yes. So w one of the things I, I wish I knew was that it involved so much reading. <laughs> 
it really and it appreciates theology is one of those those s s disciplines that appreciates reading profoundly so if you are a voracious reader um you're well within good company but one of the things i can assure you of should you come study theology within your very first year you will grow a profound appreciation of reading kayla like as I told you, like the balance mm -hmm. is very important. You know, in my first year, there were so th many things that I was doing wrong. Like, so I prefer to write my things in Afrikaans. Mm. I prefer to read my things in Afrikaans. So my method of studying was, so, it took me so long to actually start studying. Right? So I translated it, these things. Mm. I went through a whole process. So finding the way to, s how to, how to actually study for me to be able to write a test, I, I wish I knew that. But also the reading was very overwhelming. Me coming from Afrikaans background yeah. and everything is written in English. But then I also told myself, let Afrikaans not die here. Yeah. Let it not die here. And write your work in Afrikaans and fight for Afrikaans, yeah. you know. We know that's a battle on its own. Mm. But one thing being said, I love the diversity mm. in our faculty. Yeah. You know, like, you know, in each faculty you get, like, if you're on the, on the Roy Plain, on the main campus, you can spot like students by what they are dressed by. No, they are from that faculty. They are from that faculty. You don't want to stereo, like stereotype or things, but you can't, you can't pin that on a theology student. Yeah. They're all so unique. And I love the fact that the faculty is so open, mm. open for change. Obviously with church methods, it's a bit different, but like for, the the matters of the day yeah you know they are the, the the thing that i love is that they are open to have a conversation about it yeah let's talk about it and one thing that our faculty have that many other students don't have is most professors has an open door policy you know you can literally knock on their door and ask, do you have a minute? And even if they don't, they'll let you in and let you talk. And it could have been an email, but they let you yeah. talk. And that's the beauty of us. We are a small faculty, as you know. Yeah. And everybody basically know each other. Oh, yes. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. So it's a close-knitted group of people. And I think that's one thing that I love, mm. you know, being in in this world, in those close knitted, because we, ten we tend to lose ourselves in, this, in the bigger groups. Yeah. But to build relationship, we, we need that close Absolutely. knitted relationships. Yeah. Absolutely. And so one final question, is there, is there a final question? Yes, 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 absolutely. Let me see. Okay, so the next question is, um, what is more interesting to talk about as a class discussion, the, the holiness of God or the evilness of Satan? Wow, I mean, I, I, am, <laughs> I am particularly trained in this, in this field. So perhaps the middle way would be to wonder what is the impact of both of those possibilities and realities for the human, for us who shape our world? Is it evil or is it the goodness or the holiness? And I'm reminded now of that text in Genesis 1 that says, that invites us to be fruitful and multiply. And so the multiplication and the fruitfulness thereof is founded on this idea that we are good humans. And in the same way in Genesis, in, in John 10, we find the words that, that the divine invites us into life and life 
in abundance. And so in theological discussions, we are more concerned with our human responsibility in order to shape and create a world that is more just, in a world that is more good, a world that has proper Ubuntu. Yes. We are interested in that. And so that would be the discussions that we are interested in, recognizing the reality of evil, but, re but also committing ourselves to be responsible individuals. And Kayla has now mentioned in very particularly important ways how small we are because we are a very yes. small faculty, but also the intimate relationship that there exists between staff members and students. And um, I, was, I was often told as a, as a, when, I, when I was matric, I was said that when you go to university, you will be a number. And when I came to the Faculty of Theology, I was not a number. We knew each other by our names. And that is what the Faculty of Theology offers. We as academics, we as staff members, get to know students by their names. We get to know who their parents are. We get to know the communities from which they come. We get to know them. And so we invite you, if you should so be interested, to apply to join us at the Faculty of Theology. And when you join us at the Faculty of Theology, you are joining a community that says at the, st when, you very walk, when you walk in, at the very face of the faculty, there are these words. Um, the sun of justice illuminates us. And so at the faculty as a community, we invite you to be illuminated by justice. And I thank you, Kayla, for sharing yourself, for sharing your gifts, for sharing us for all of what you know with our prospective students. Thank you for your company as well, Ashwin. I really appreciate it. Keep well. Thank you.